I want to welcome everybody to today's webinar event. I am your host, Sean Kozak, President of Nurseries Trading Academy. And really kind of looking forward to today's topics. We're going to be doing an event here where we break down market timing using order flow and micro volume. And if anybody here is new to our events, I'll just go over a few housekeeping and ground rules just so you understand the, the flow of things as we present these topics. Uh, we are recording the webinar and we will provide a, a recording after the event. And uh, more importantly, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box. If I don't see them right away, I will respond to them. I will get to them as we go through the event and we cover the topics. And we will reserve time at the end of the webinar to go over any Q&A, uh, should you be able to stick around to the end. If at any time you have to leave, not to worry, we'll provide any links of videos and discounts and any coupons for special offers uh, following the, the webinar uh, via email. So the fact that you've registered, uh, you will receive that. And uh, I hope that you come here with an open mind to learn. I think one of the things that is really important is that you understand that as a, as a trading school, my, my purpose with our team is to truly help you guys become better traders by giving you insight, experience, and also using tools that we've designed to help solve problems, right? So before I go any further, um, if you could tell me a little bit, is anybody in here new to order flow? Um, I do recognize some of the names, uh, but I do see a lot of new faces, which is great. If you could just tell me if you're new to order flow, just type the word new in the chat box. If you have any type of experience, just type EXP. That way I can know that you've got some experience and uh, that way I'll be able to help cater the discussions based off the, uh, the audience, right? And the experience level. So we got Myron says he's new. Carlos says he's new. It's great. I remember when I first started looking at order flow, it was a journey and uh, it, it, was, it was such a rewarding process because once I learned what it was doing and, and how it helped in making decisions, I found that, you know, it made, it made things so much different. It made, it made trading such a different experience. And hopefully I can share that wisdom and experience with you guys today. Now, in order for me to go any further, I do need to cover a disclaimer. As always, risks are associated with the business and we have no financial outcome on those uh, situations for your trading. We are not here to advise. We are not brokers or CTAs. We're an educational provider. Please note that if you do place risk capital in the markets, you do sweat your own discretion. And it's always very important to know that past performance never guarantees future results, okay? So now that we got that out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about you and me and, and us as a group in here because I really think that it's important that I relate with you guys first and foremost. Some of you know me from a long, uh, you know, we have a lot of history. I, I recognize some, some familiar names and some of you that are just new to our, our events, you know, welcome. Um, you know, you're in a really great environment. A lot of, a lot of great traders in here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about who I am. Um, first and foremost, my name is Sean Kozak, and I am the, the co-founder and president of the school. I'm also the chief architect. I work with a lot of the development uh, teams, uh, outside uh, help as well as inside help. We have internal developers and also external developers. But the truth of the matter is, is that I'm no different than any of you, eh? Um, when I when I look at you know my place in this space and and what we do here, I've I've actually suffered pretty substantial losses in the financial markets. I've had frustration, I've had fear, I've had times where I wanted to give up and throw in the towel. Man, I I remember you know there was one time at the very beginning of my career I actually got got started in the markets in 2008. <laughs> it's kind of fitting that we're going through situations very similar right now. And I remember, I remember I got down on my knees one night and I actually asked God to help me with my business and with my trading because I was just, it was going all over the place. And that's just me being honest with you, right? I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people in here with different experience levels. Some of you are, are, are struggling at a very high level and some of you guys aren't. And depending on where you fit in the mix, you know, it's really important to know that you're not alone and there's a lot of other people on a very similar journey in becoming a professional trader, a trader because trading is definitely not for the faint of heart. Now, fast forward 10 years, right? Through the ups and downs and through the, the trials and tribulations of trading and building systems and running trading rooms, I do consider myself a successful trader. Uh, I am a, a trader who manages money. Um, you know, I, I'm not Bobby Axelrod uh, <laughs> down on Wall Street with a thousand traders on my desk, but I, I definitely know what it's like to trade live capital. 
I know what it's like to trade small size. I also know what it's like to trade very large size. Um, I am a trade leader on the Collective 2 platform. Uh, I'm not trading it right now because I'm waiting for the volatility to settle uh, with all the conditions in the market. Uh, I don't like to trade managed capital in those conditions. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I do believe I am a competent trader. I have strategies and I have software that, I, that has given me an edge. And the reason why I consider that is I've actually become a great trader helping thousands of students, right? I, I didn't start that way. I, you know, over the years, I became great because of the things that I did and the things that I, I helped other people become. And so why do I do it? A lot of traders ask, you know, why do you, why do you teach when you could just trade? Well, the truth is I do both. And because I, I believe it's my purpose. And I also think it's, it's one of my biggest passions. I have other passions in life, right? I love the gym. I love music. I love great movies. I love traveling. But trading is one of my biggest passions. And it's a really big rewarding environment for me to work with independent traders you know, whether we're in the trading room or we're in group coaching programs or even solo coaching programs to see someone that, you know, just says, you know, Sean, you know, ever since I found you guys, I've never looked back. And that's a really, really big deal because there's a lot of great companies out there and there's a lot of great educators and a lot of great traders. But what makes us different? Well, I think it has a lot to do with the way that we break down education the way that we build trading systems and indicators are very different. And I think it's how we teach the concepts that makes us stand out. And so hopefully through this today, I'll be able to shed some light on some of the things that I believe is critical with order flow. And, uh, and if you like the webinar, feel free to send a comment in or, you know, an email and let us know. All right. So I'm going to go over a few topics and, uh, Basically, you know, we call this day one order flow. It's not supposed to say that. That's a typo, guys. A little bit of disclaimer. <laughs> but webinar agenda is uh, pledge and creds. I want to talk a little bit about that. I just did a little bit about my own my own journey. Um, we're going to go into the overview of order flow. We're going to talk about uh, volume on a micro level, not on a macro level. And I want to talk about market timing because when we take order flow and volume and we bring them together, the goal is to help us make better decisions with entry and exit. Because that's how you make money. You get into the market, you get out, right? That's how you make money. You can either make money or lose money, you get in, you get out. And so today I want to address, I think what's the most important concept we're going to talk about today. And that's how to avoid getting stopped out as best as possible so that you can trust the execution. And we're going to go over some examples. We're going to look at some examples. I've, I've got uh, a workspace and charts. We're going to go through all those live charts, et cetera. And if you like what we're talking about here and you feel that, you know what, this is exactly what I was looking for, or, you know, this, the way that we talk about it can really, you know, it really kind of sheds light on some of the things. And this is great. Okay. We do have a discount. We will provide a pricing uh, link at the end of the event for you guys to choose to engage in some of the tools that we're talking about today and uh, then we'll go over some questions, okay? So I wanna talk about order flow and how it helped me, okay? As I said, I'm no different than you guys. I am a trader. So when I trade, one of the things that I always struggled with, and I still do sometimes, is I will fear the outcome, despite all logic of understanding that it's a probabilities business and we have to manage risk and position sizing and reward ratios and win rates and all that stuff. But let's just strip it right down to what everybody feels every single day. I know without a certain, without a, a, a factor of a doubt that everybody in here, every single trader in here has an element of fear before they get into the market. And that has to do with being able to trust your entry. It also has to do with being able to have the information that's necessary for you to want to put a trade on. Now, before I go any further, can you guys just either agree or disagree with me, uh, either put a yes or a no in the chat box that to some degree, 
almost every single trade that you take, there's this little, little voice inside of you that says, I really hope this works. Can you guys just give me a yes if, if that relates with you? Right? Like, I, like, I just want to know I'm not alone here. <laughs> okay? I just, I just really want to know I'm not the only one as an experienced trader. Okay? Bob says I'm not alone. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Well, that's exactly why I really enjoy the order flow process um, when applied to specific strategies because order flow can help control that fear. Okay. Now, when we look at order flow, there's a few concepts of, of order flow. There's the inventory. There's the transfer of the order flow to the charts. A lot of you guys might know that as a, as a footprint chart. There's how we understand the tape, the time and sales, and then looking at the relationship to deltas and all of the different signals around you know, order flow and, and what that can be done inside the tape, okay? Outside of that, there's really not too much else that needs to be discussed. I mean, there's different combinations of the inventory and the charts and the tapes and the deltas that make up different order flow software and signals. But for the most part, this is the foundation that makes the house stand strong in the wind. And so, the reason people fear trading is because they feel like they don't have all the information, right? Like when I first got started, when I first got started trading, I started trading on time-based charts. I don't trade on time-based charts that much anymore, but I can assure you this, that I still wanted to know what was going on. And I always had this voice in the back of me says, there's got to be something I don't know here. Like I got I to gotta figure something else out here that's going to help me even become better. Well, let me kind of explain why that is, okay? If I just look at this chart right here, okay? And this is a chart of crude oil. It's a pretty active futures contract. A lot of people know crude oil, right? If I just maximize this out, okay? You know, to the blind eye, we can see trends and we can see support and resistance and we can see all of that information, okay? But you're looking at a blank chart. And outside of drawing trend lines, support and resistance and having an opinion about the market, it really kind of doesn't give you any other information. You could add some moving averages or some Bollinger Bands, or you could add some fibs or some support and resistance, or you could draw some lines on your chart, but it still doesn't change the discrepancy of data and our need for wanting to learn more about what's going on behind the scenes, okay? Kind of think of us looking at a chart as, as the end result, but there's stuff going on behind the scenes, Right, and that's why I like order flow is because order flow will help me, okay, get behind the scenes. And that's where I don't have to worry about what's going on inside the data because now I have a process to be able to help me make sense of that data. So when we talk about the order flow process, the order flow process starts with inventory, okay. I'm going to grab a a cursor here so I can draw my charts. Okay, I'm just gonna pull this up here so you can uh, you can see me here. Okay, so over here this is a, this is called a dome, right? Most people know this as a price ladder. It's the inventory. Okay, the inventory is before trades are executed, right? And people will place orders above price or below price waiting to get filled, or people will place market orders and get filled at market, okay? Now, the inventory is fine, okay? The inventory is fine because the inventory is the start of the process, but it doesn't really give us the conclusion to the story. Once a trade is executed, it moves over here to the tape. The tape is another word for time and sales. And so once the, the order is executed in the market, it's no longer behind the scenes. It's now public knowledge. And that public knowledge is identified through like a receipt. The time in sales is like a receipt of everybody out there taking trades. 
and there's the quantity and the time and the price in which they executed that order. Now, the issue with that is that I don't know too many really, really, I don't, I don't know too many traders at all other than people that only specialize in tape reading that can really make sense of that information other than it's just coming in super, super, super fast. There's numbers coming through that really, really quickly. And there are some really great tape readers out there that are really great at reading the tape. Uh, I'm not one of them and I'll never pretend to want to be one of them because I, I like to make things simple because there's already enough to think about in trading, right? So what we do in using order flow software or the, the software that we've designed is we transfer the tape to the chart, okay? Now, this is not a new concept. There's platforms that use that. There's other indicators in the space that do this because that's just a simple transfer of order flow to a chart, okay? This is the process in which order flow is done, okay? But where I want to kind of go into this, and before we go into any more further detail, I want to kind of just show you what that looks like over here. So let's go over here, and I'm going to grab a, an order flow chart here. And you, know, you notice how there's, this, there's these orders that are coming right here. There's, there's all these, these orders here and these orders here, okay? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the inventory. And as the inventory becomes filled, it moves to the time and sales. Well, we actually have the inventory here. So I can tell you that all of the, the selling inventory is this, and all of the buying inventory is that, okay? So the way I built this, and the way I, I like this is I don't really, want to have to look at that anymore, right? I don't, I don't want to have to make myself bonkers looking at that. But there still has the time and sales equation, right? Now the time and sales equation, well, that's a lot of numbers. I personally don't want to have to look at numbers like that all day. I, I'd like to look at how I'm trading. And, and this is where a lot of traders get stuck is they don't really understand what's the most important part of order flow. Right? How many of you guys can agree that you've, you, 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 you've learned order flow or some of it's been exposed to you or maybe you're new, but you kind of like, well, which do I really focus on? What's the most important stuff that I need to learn out of the order flow process? Can you guys agree with me that that's a pretty important question? Yes, no, maybe so. Would you agree that you know, there's, when you learn something, there's the must knows and then there's the stuff that's really not that relevant, okay? Well, the key here for me is I need to be able to take the time in sales and simplify it. So what we do is we have a feature in here that allows us to turn on the order flow, okay? And that order flow is inside the candles, okay? So we're just gonna, you can do that or I can make them a little smaller, okay? Just like this. And now we've put all of the order flow beside the price candles. Well, now there's really no need anymore for, uh, for the time of sales. Okay, so now I have now I just have a chart. Okay. And and that's that's the simple equation of taking inventory, <clears throat> visually representing it on a chart, transferring the time in sales to a price a price chart, and now only having to look at one step of the equation, but have all of that information right there at your fingertips. Okay. So before I discuss this any further, does everybody understand that? Because I haven't really told you how to make money using that yet, or I haven't really explained the, the best use of it or anything. I just I wanted to go into the basics of it so anybody that's new in here understands that. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to talk about how to read the order flow. Because the order flow can be as simple or as complicated as we choose to make it. I wanna ask, or I wanna explain the question that I asked myself at the very beginning of my journey in this order flow equation. And I used to sit there and I say, okay, well, what is the order flow really doing? Well, it's coming from the time in sales. Okay, well, what would the time in sales do for us? Well, it would tell us, you know, whether the buyers or the sellers are being aggressive, right? Cause you're gonna see slow order flow coming in fast order flow coming in or large quantities of that coming in 
right? So really it has to do with the speed and it has to do with the quantity, okay? Well, let me ask you this. Do you think retail traders can change the pace of the market? And do you think retail traders can change the quantity of order flow? Or do you think it's the bigger players? You guys tell me. Would you say that the retail traders have that type of power? Or would you say it's the guys that move the bigger money around? Bigger players, Myron says. Yes, bigger players, Carlos says. Yes, which I think is pretty important because what we need to understand is that we're participating in their environment. So it would make sense for us to look for clues of what they're doing. And that's exactly why I like reading the tape visually on the chart is because I want to know what they're doing and where they're doing it or kind of like the little, I guess you'd say clues they left behind, so to speak, because that's really what it is. It's little clues of data that us retail small fish, so to speak, can go in and say, yep, there's a really valuable clue. Yep, that's a pretty important thing I should be paying attention to. And what does it mean to me? Well, I like to talk about this as the aggression in the tape. And what we do is we highlight the, the numbers or we highlight them with dots on the candle because some traders are visual traders. They don't want to see a bunch of numbers and some traders want to see the visual cues. And so what we do is we, we identify when there's big buying or selling taking place in the time and sales at specific price levels and we translate that data onto a candle. Now, I want to go in and talk about that for a second. Okay, let's just take the most recent example. Okay, I can show you right now that there on this last bar down here, okay, I can tell you right now without even looking at numbers, I'm gonna turn the print off, perfect. I can tell you right now that just based off of these white dots, there's a lot of aggression coming in at the buy side of the market by bigger traders. And I don't want you to worry about this uptrend and all the pullbacks and the structure. I want you to think like a professional and I'm gonna turn the inventory off so I can draw over here on the chart and show you this. I want you to think about what that means to us. You gotta remember we're on a time and price axis, okay? So what that means is that at this point in time, there was a lot of gr aggressive buying coming in at that price axis, okay? And so that was an important price to bigger traders to buy at that price level. So what does that mean? Well, that means that they might lift from here real quickly or if they were to come back to test that level, that there's more than likely going to be aggressive buying in there until all of the other order flow has been met from the opposing side of the traders. So what, what's really nice about this is that it's like a kind of an invisible level of demand. I want you to just pretend that's like a little demand zone in here that says buy, right? Now, I'm not saying that this is the strategy. I'm not saying that you should just go buy every single imbalance. I just want you to understand that there's reactions that will often take place in those levels. Like, do you see what's happening right there? As the price came into that level, you get a little reaction. It doesn't mean that we're gonna lift off of their 20 ticks. It means that there's buyers in that location that are gonna be met with opposing order flow. Okay, could the sellers blow through it? Sure, if the liquidity changes. But if the buyers are gonna hold strength at that level, a lot of times what'll happen is price will come back and retest that area. Okay, now to a scalper looking for three to four ticks, that's important. It would have happened already, right? You would have come in, you would have had your reaction, you would have been in and out. 
A lot of times they'll come through, they'll rotate back out of there. We don't know what's going to happen, but I can assure you this, that this was a demand zone, okay? This was a demand zone that was right there. Now, like I said, we're not here to trade every single level of imbalance. We're here to understand what the order flow is telling us. Let's go in here and take a look at some other examples, okay? All of these zones on the chart are examples of order flow imbalances in the tape, okay? Now, to me, personally, the way I like to trade, I don't like to buy and sell imbalances like that. I like to know where they are, but I don't rely on just a four tick imbalance to be the end all be all in a futures market. What I like to see is how do I use that in combination with other aspects of trading to line up the data. Now, I'm gonna go into more detail on that in just a second. We're gonna go back into the, uh, cause we're gonna, there's, a, there's a process here. I wanna, I wanna teach you this process and then we're gonna go into the examples, okay? The next equation in the order flow is not just in the aggression, it's in the deltas. The deltas tell a story of the net relationship to buyers and sellers. When a candle has positive delta, it is said to have net positive aggression in the order flow. When a candle has negative delta, it's said to have net negative relation in the order flow. Now there will be times when you will see price go up on negative delta. There will be times when you see price go down on negative delta, okay? That's kind of like a random thing that normally doesn't happen. So when it happens, it should make you kind of think, well, what's going on here, right? Let's give you an example. Let's go and take a look here. <clears throat> look at this right here. Prices are going up, but on negative order flow, okay? What does that tell us? It tells us that there's absorption in the market. It tells us that even though prices are going up, the sellers are not able to control the market. It means the sellers are being absorbed into that. So whenever you see price going in one direction, but the order flow is not lining up with that, it's because there's absorption in the liquidity taking place. Now, how do you trade that? Well, it's not so much about how you trade that. Take a look at this candle over here. You got prices going down in here on really strong deltas. That's like a random thing in the market that when you see it, it's kind of like, okay, well, the buyers are getting trapped in there. The buyers are getting sucked into that. They're, they're, they're not able to lift price. It's very bearish. When you see that, when you see that sellers are not able to drop price, that's very bullish. When you see buyers not able to drop price, that's very bearish. So one clue that I would encourage you to pay attention to in reading the deltas is when you have price, okay, lifting on negative delta equals bullish, okay? Because it means that the sellers are having a real hard time stopping them. When you have price dropping on positive delta equals bearish. Okay, I want you to write that down. It's very important. Or watch the video after. Okay. So we know that that's levels of demand. What about this? Wouldn't you say that that would also be a level of supply when you start to see a whole lot of dots like that coming in? Take a look down here. There was a whole lot of buying that came into this candle. What happened here? We lifted out of it. What about over here? We had a whole lot of buying come in on that candle. Look, we came into it. We lifted out of here. Just because this one up here didn't work doesn't mean they're not all going to give you clues in the data. Okay. So what I'm here to do is I'm here to tell you which stuff really matters and which stuff doesn't. And we're gonna take all this and we're gonna piece it together once I talk to you about volume, okay? First, before we go any further, did you learn something from that? It's important to know if you're learning. 
give me a yes that that is interesting, that you learned something from that, that it's basic enough for you to understand it, makes sense, not too confusing. Myron says yes, everybody says yes, perfect, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to shift gears for a second, okay? I want to shift gears for a second, and I want to talk about volume. Now, volume is a very important subject. Order flow is very important, but volume is very important because volume leads price. Okay, it's the only leading indicator. Even order flow is lagging. Volume is not. Okay, so let me repeat this. All, not with yellow, every indicator except for level software. Okay, all indicators okay, equal lag, except level software. Okay, level software does not lag, levels provides areas. Okay, all indicators and oscillators. Okay. Sorry if it's a little, little uh, I'm left-handed and I'm writing with a right-hand mouse. All indicators and oscillators equal lag because price must come before the indicator. Okay. However, volume will tell us what we can expect on price because high volume equals, it's like a magnet, okay? Low volume equals rejection. So whenever we have areas of high volume or we have areas of low volume, it's pretty important information for us to have. Now, there's different ways to look at volume. You can look at volume on a day, a week, a session. You can look at a volume over a period of time during the day or in this case, we're gonna look at it on a single candle. We're gonna look at a volume on a single price candle, okay? And there's, there's a few things that I gotta teach you. There's the components of a profile. There's looking at the clusters of volume inside each bar, and then the patterns that lead price, okay? What have I told you that I can show you a pattern that will, will show you the direction pl price is almost always gonna follow through? Now, there's no guarantees in everything in trading, but there's a very high degree of accuracy with volume patterns that will lead price, especially when you're on the right side of the market, okay? So let's talk a little bit about first the components of a profile. Every single profile, whether we're looking at it on a macro level or a smaller time frame, has four very important parts. You have a value area high, you have a value area low, and then you have the value area, and then you have the point of control or the node, okay? Now, like I said, this is normally done on big profiles, but when we strip it down into small candles, we put the levels on the bar, okay? Well, what I'd like to do is I'd like to ask you, okay, do you think that having a whole bunch of candles with volume on it is going to make it more noisy? or less noisy? I'm gonna see if you get the trick question. Because remember, <coughs> Mercio, Mercio answered, if I say that right, he said more, you're absolutely right. Having volume on every single bar is gonna increase the noise because you're looking at a whole bunch of stuff, right? Well, what I like to do, okay, let's go in here and show you exactly what this looks like. I want to go in here and put the point of controls on the candles, the value of highs, the value of lows, the VWAPs, okay? So now you can see that every single candle, I can tell you right now that crude oil, the value of low of this bar is that green line. You've got the VWAP is the blue line. You've got the yellow is the point of control. And then you've got this black shaded area, which is the bulk of volume. We call that the cluster. Well, to me, okay, to me, I don't like all of that noise. Okay, 
So what I want to do is I want to clean this up a bit. I'll come in here and I'll turn off the I'll turn off the value highs, the VWAPs, the point of controls, and all I'm really concerned about is the 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 bulk of volume. I call this the bulk of volume. You could call this the cluster. You could call this the majority of volume. You could call this the 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 the, the, the shift of volume, the volume sentiment. Either way, I call it the cluster. Okay, the cluster represents the majority of volume on every single candle, okay? So why do you think that this is important? Can you guys tell me why you think that would be important? Do you do, why do you think it would be important for us to understand um, the volume inside of every single bar, the majority of the volume? Anybody have an opinion or a volume attracts price? Yes, volume does attract price, but also volume leads price depending on how it's used, okay? So what I wanna do today is I wanna teach you a visual pattern, okay? Okay, um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Carlos. It says, are you showing constant volume candles? Uh, this is a range candle. You could use it on any type of candle, but I'm just looking at a range for this example. Let's go in here and talk about this pattern, okay? I want to, I want to, um, I want to teach you a pattern, okay, that is very important. Okay, I really, really want to teach you something that, that I feel to be one of the most important things that I've ever extracted from using volume analysis, okay? In, in trading, okay? So let's say you have price going up, right? You got a price bar going up, okay? You got a price bar going up, you got a price bar going down, and you got a price bar going down, okay? You got the volume here, you got the volume here, you got the volume here, and then you got the volume here. Well, that's a, that's a shift of volume, okay? It's not, like, remember, you have to have volume execute in order for price to move. Let me, let me write that down. Volume must execute Think about what order flow is. Order flow creates volume. In order for there to be volume, you need to execute trade. As soon as a trade is execute, volume becomes a, a factor. So volume, okay, is from execution, okay? And that will basically tell us sentiment. So when I see that this volume right here on this example shifted down, okay? That will happen when it's shifting sentiment. When we have the same thing here, price volume shifts down and then volume shifts up. The reason price lifted is because the volume shifted. Now, price will go further. I'm not so concerned with the entire candle's volume. I want to see the majority of volume. So what does a cluster tell us? A cluster is three. A cluster is three ticks. Okay, it's just, this is meant for day trading, okay? Three ticks of volume. Almost every single cluster will include the point of control because it's the single point of control. And all of the volume is normally associated around the point of control. So when the volume point of controls and clusters are simultaneous and they shift, what this tells us is that we can expect a sentiment to change. So I call these the three bar breaks or the three bar clusters or the three bar pattern, either way, we've coded a signal that will identify the shift of volume, <clears throat> okay? And 
you can see how price continues in those directions. Now, it's not so much these two examples. I don't want you to say, well, Sean's showing these two really, really great examples on a chart, and that's got to be how it's going to be every single time, okay? Let's kind of put things into context. You're going to have volume shifts all over the market. What we want to think about is, what about if we're in an uptrend, okay? And we get a volume shift here to the upside. Or what if we're in a downtrend and we get a volume shift here to the downside? What that'll tell us is there's confirmation of follow through. What if you're at a level of resistance and price comes up and we get a volume shift at the top? Or what if we come down at the bottom and we get a volume shift at the bottom? What it's telling us is that where we're actually planning on engaging, we now have data to help us. Okay. So let me give you an example on a chart. I'm going to just take this chart here for a second, and I'm going to go into the, signal, the software, and I'm going to turn the signals on. Okay. I'm going to turn those signals on. And we're just going to go look here at these patterns for a second. Okay, you can see the trend is up right here. You can see that this is an uptrend. You can see that, you know, we came in, we pushed in, we pushed in, we pushed in, we pulled back, we pushed in, we pulled back, we pushed in. Now this is a small time frame. It's all relative to whatever charts you're using and whatever time frames or bar types. Like I said, this is a universal software application that will generate these signals across everything that you apply it to. But I want you to kind of put into context. If we know, <clears throat> that the trend started here, we made a higher high in price. We pulled back, the volume shifted here, okay? Close of that candle, put your stop below the low, boom. What if another candle here, put your stop below the low, boom, right? So what I'm trying to get at is these are examples of just seeing it there. What about up here? right? You can see we've got volume shifts on both sides. Which one do you think is more important? Well, if we're at a level of resistance, okay, if we're at a level of resistance, okay, and this is support, when we're at resistance, We would be paying attention to the shorts. When we're at support, we'd be paying attention to the longs. It doesn't need to be difficult to understand why the volume will lead the direction at areas where we're planning on engaging. When we're in an uptrend, I would be paying attention to the three bars on the long side of the market because I'm in an uptrend. If I'm in a downtrend, broke structure here, key area of support taken out, pull back, downtrend, I would be paying attention <clears throat> to the volume shifts on the sell side of the market. Now, this is really important. It's super, super important. And I'll explain why. Because at the beginning of this lesson, I asked everybody if everybody felt a little bit afraid. Okay. I, felt, I asked everybody, I said, does anybody here feel like I do that whenever I want to get into the market, there's an element of fear? And we all agreed. There was a whole bunch of people that agreed. So the whole concept of today was for me to take the order flow data, which is the aggression in the tape and the deltas, and then take the volume cluster analysis and understand what it's telling us about volume leading price and merge them, <clears throat> okay, merge them so that we have an ability to help reduce the fear when we look to take trades. Okay, so the goal here now is to take the order flow, 
take the volume, put the data together so that I can help you remove the fear and you can have more trust in your entry and exit decisions because we have confirmation. Who in here would agree that that's an important concept? Who in here, just give me a yes if you think that it would be good to use the order flow and the volume to help you remove fear so that you can trust your entries because now we have data that's going to give us confirmation. Myron says yes, Ogan says yes, Carlos, Langford, anybody else? Help me out here, guys. I need to know that everybody's on this kind of same wavelength here, okay, so that we can kind of all kind of come together here because there's a lot of information that we need to learn. I want to make sure that you guys are able to see why this is important to apply it, okay? Perfect. Kenneth Allen, Allen, Bob, Kerry, Charles, Cliff, great. Irving says we're following you, excellent. So now take a look at this. When you go out into the market, you go to webinars, you attend trading rooms, come to my trading room, other vendors' trading rooms. At the end of the day, at, I said at the beginning that my purpose is my passion and I truly wanna help traders succeed. So it doesn't matter if you use our software, other people's software, software that you've made yourself, or if you don't even use indicators and you're strictly a price action trader, you still need to make a decision around entry locations, <clears throat> okay? Some of you might look at trading profiles. Some of you are gonna look at trading averages, supply and demand levels, Fibonacci, round numbers, pivots. The list goes on. I can give you a hundred different indicators and everybody uses an indicator for the same reason, to help make their decision more objective. Well, that's because they're trying to reduce the fear. They're trying to find an edge that will give them a better probability of success. So the way that I can do that for you is I can take the order flow and I can take the volume and I can help you understand how to merge them. So the way I look at market timing is very straightforward. Market timing, using order flow and volume. There's three ways you can enter a trade based off what I'm teaching you today. Number one, is you can get into a trade without using any confirmation whatsoever. We call this first touch trading. You're either gonna put a limit, you're gonna sell at an area of interest, or you're going to buy at an area of interest. You're going to put a buy limit order or a buy market. You're gonna put a sell limit order or a sell market, and you're just gonna get in because you're planning on getting into the market. <clears throat> or what you can do is you can use order flow. Remember, this is a resistance level. You can see that we went up and we went down. We flipped the delta and we had a whole lot of selling come into the aggressive tape. Or we could take a support level. We flipped the delta with a whole lot of aggression on the tape. Okay, we call these delta flips with proof because now we're using order flow and we're using delta and the aggression, okay? Delta is the net relationship, Carlos, between the bid and the ask in the tape. So when it says a negative 7271 or positive 133, that means between all the buying and selling, there was 271 more contracts executed at the sell side of that candle, okay? Or you have the third option, when you have a resistance level or a pullback or an area of interest or a trend line or a structure area or whatever the case, but you're planning on selling, okay? Or you're planning on buying. You can see that not only do you have the deltas flipping, you have the follow through with a three bar pattern with a volume shift and a bunch of order flow. Not only do you have the delta flipping, you have the follow through with a bunch of order flow on a three bar volume completion, okay? Now the reason this is so important 
Okay, the reason this is so important is this. Every trader has different risk tolerance. Every trader has different strategies. Every trader has different objectives. But every trader has the same, the same need. And that's to try to reduce the risk, try to eliminate the fear, and try to put evidence on our side that whenever we go to buy or sell any trading system or any indicator, or any level that we can add probabilities through the use of the data. Is there a guarantee in trading? Never. But wouldn't it make sense to try to use stuff like this that's going to help reduce the fear, reduce the, 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 the lack of information, and give us more insight to making better decisions on entry and exit? Because you can use this alternatively for exits as well, okay? So let's kind of take a look at what that looks like, okay? Let's go over here. I've got order flow and volume, okay? So if you take a look here, <clears throat> I've got order flow and volume on my chart now. I've got some volume averages on here as well. Okay, let's go down here and take a look at, let's just grab this for a second. I'm just going to grab this. This is crude oil today, so we're just going to take a look at this. Okay, and uh, let's go over here for a second and show you some examples. Let's say you wanted to buy a pullback into a trend. Okay, you could buy the pullback into the trend blindfolded on this candle. Or you can let this candle show you that we've got delta and order flow stepping in at that level. Perfect. You've now just given yourself insight into the buyers stepping in at that location. Could you get in here? Yes. Could you get in on the retest? Yes. At the order flow? Yes. But you have data to help that decision. What about all this stuff out here? Well, that's where I tell traders it's not as important to be looking at every signal and every order flow example. You still need to have a location or purpose for engagement, right? Like you have to have some reason why you want to get in unless you were deciding that you're only going to just trade the signals by themselves. That is completely fine. Because let me show you, there is a lot of good order flow signals that come in here in the direction of the market. Let's go in here and show another example, and then we'll go to some live charts. Let's take a look at this one. This is a pullback to an area of interest, a trend line. You could draw a trend line. You could draw an average. I'm using simple examples, directional trading. A lot of traders like it. Take a look. What do you see here? Price came into this area, and even on that candle, you remember how I said that sellers, remember at the beginning I said when you see delta, when you see price going down on negative delta, what is that? When price goes down on positive delta, sorry, not negative, positive delta. When price goes down on positive delta, equals what? Bearish. Okay, look at this. Price going down on positive delta. Bearish. Not only is it bearish on that candle, look at all the buyers that got trapped up there at the top and then right away, you can see that there was a three bar met with aggressive selling, which was a three bar shift at an area of interest. Now, you could get in right here just blindfoldedly, or you could use a tool that opens up behind the scenes data to give you that. We're not just looking at just Delta. 
we're not just looking at order flow. We're not just looking at volume. We're looking at all of it. We're bringing the two together. Let's say you're a reversal trader and you're buying value area lows or support levels. Take a look here. Okay. You can see that price came into the levels and rejected out of them with three bar completions with a ton of order flow at a level of support. I'll give you another example of where I'm in a higher time frame level of supply. This was a 15 minute supply zone, that box on the chart. And when price got up into it, instead of getting into sell supply here with a sell order and then price come up and up and up and up and then reverse, you can wait for price to come into an area and then show you that the sellers are stepping in. Does that mean that it won't go up? No, maybe it'll go up a little bit more and then drop down again. But at least you waited for data to tell you that it's going in that favorable situation. You're not sitting there just blindfolded to the area. Okay, well, let's go back and take a look at some real examples. Take a look here on crude oil. Trend is down, okay. Price came in. Price came in here and gave a delta flip right off the average right there. You can see that price came in and delta flipped. What do you see right here on that candle? Now remember, I'm not so concerned about all of the order flow in every single bar. You can see that it happened here, it happened here. You can see it happened here. What about the fact that I'm planning on taking a trend trade here? Where do you think that the information matters most to me? Out here in no man's land or where I'm planning on getting into a low risk entry for a trend trade? It makes more sense for me to engage at an area of interest and then look at the order flow and then look at the volume as opposed to just getting in every, every time. Unless you said, you know what, Sean, I'm just gonna trade the signals because they work a lot. And they really do. Just depends on the type of bars you're using, and it also depends on the time frame that you traded on, right? So if you take a look, there's order flow here. That's like a level of supply in the print. Price closed down. If price came back up, it's coming back into test sellers. Let's go bar by bar. Right here. Comes up, comes up a little bit further. What about right there? Right? Drops down again, more sellers in the print. What happened right there? You can see the completion of volume, okay, on that rotation. You can see that the delta flip happened right here. That's that number two entry. What about the, the three bar completion? Met with a bunch of order flow. Okay. Now I'm not here to say that. Let's go and just take anything. Let's go over here to the CL market. Okay. And I don't want to worry about this candle. I don't care what the market's doing right now. I just want to look at this is an example, and let's just say you're, uh, you're using profiles, okay? And let's say you're using profiles and you're looking at trading a higher time frame level and you wanna reduce risk. Well, let's go down and just take a look at the profiles here, okay? <clears throat> let's go back over here. That profile just shifted, so let's just, let's just go back over here and take a look at that, okay? So I know I know for a fact that down here, we're at the value area lows, okay? I know for a fact we're up here at the value area highs. That's expensive and cheap. What about in here, low volume rejects price, okay? I don't like that example because that profile just merged at four o'clock. I wanna use a different example. I wanna use a profile that didn't merge. I wanna go back here and take a look at another example. That's today, 
let's go over here and take a look at this. We're going to grab this. Let's just grab those, okay? That's the value rate lows of the profile off the overnight session, okay? So let's go in here and take a look at back here, down here. Perfect. So if I'm coming down in here into these reversal levels, okay, and the market's trending down, where was the first sign that true sentiment really started to shift here? Because this is really what a lot of traders need to start understanding, is that if you've got a freight train coming down into an area, it takes a long time for a locomotive to stop moving, right? You notice how if you're ever on a train, they put the brakes on well before the station, okay? Well, when they get to the station, they're still coasting into the, the they're still taxing into the bay, right? Like they're still, they're kind of coming in slowly, but you're still moving. Well, that's what's happening here. Until you, you can see the deltas come in. A lot of times that's profit taking, profit taking. There's buyers stepping in right here. How do I know that? Look at the shift of volume. Look at the buyers come in. Does that mean that they're going to rip the market up here? They can sometimes. <laughs> Seen it happen. But what it does give us information is it tells us that, okay, they're starting to put in buying here in this location. That's where, they, that's where they lifted from. So if they come back to retest, that's where the first evidence of buying came in. Now to a scalper, that might be your trade. To an intraday level swing trader, you're likely getting back in, waiting for a much bigger retest and then waiting for a big, big rotation. Do you notice how the three bar happened here again? happened here, there was no order flow on that. You see how the three bar happened here with some order flow? And then if we continue on, look at this order flow right here, how that happened again. You can see that the buyers are stepping in on that, and then they leave with another three bar. To me, the entries for confirmation are the three bars, because the three bars are telling us that the shift of volume is happening. Because not only am I using the three bar, I'm using the order flow at that three bar. This one had strong buyers in it. This one did. And this one did as I was leaving. This one, not so much. Does everybody see why that would be important? Because if we weren't, if we weren't looking at something like that, What are we doing? We're just buying a level, hoping that it works. You're still going to hope that it works no matter what you do. But I would rather get into a level knowing that in there, there was information that was important to me. Right here, there was information that was important to me. And right there, there was information that was important to me. Because the whole concept of today's webinar is market timing to reduce fear and build trust in your systems and your execution. Could you use this as a signal trading system? 100%. You could trade three bars. We haven't even scratched the surface with one third of all of the other bells and whistles of the order flow suites that we have. I just wanted to pick some of the best golden nuggets that you could leave here today Go back in on Monday and start looking at charts or even over the weekend, getting yourself familiar, okay, getting yourself familiar with using this type of information, going back over all of your trades that you've taken over the past little while, taking a look at a lot of the different things that you would do. Let's go in here and turn the trend lines back on and let's just take a look at the uptrend for a second, okay? Price came back into this trend right here, okay? What about this right here? Like we get a pullback right here. We can see there's a pullback. Any, any monkey can say, yeah, that's a pullback into those averages, okay? But it takes somebody that has information to be able to assess whether that pullback has any clues in the data. I would rather come in here, turn the imbalances on, and then I would look at seeing if I can understand the deltas 
come in and turn the volume on, okay, and then come and see if I have any patterns. Hmm. Now I can come into the data and I can see that we're in an uptrend, okay? That's the location. This here is not so much important to me because I wouldn't be looking at using that to get into the market. I would be waiting to see if it gets met with an opposing signal or any type of rejection. If the sellers were truly gonna fail here, we would not see the three bar come back out and the three bar to come back out. We would not see that follow through. Okay, look at the three bar here. We came back in again. What does that tell us about the deltas? Price is going up on negative delta. What does that mean? Remember what we talk about? Price going up on negative delta equals bullish. El Toro the bull is stepping in. Okay? So that to me is valuable information. This, this, this is very valuable information to me. Because I'm not just relying on price data, I'm relying on the data behind the scenes. Now, I'm going to be doing alternative webinars that are going to be teaching all of the different other features of all of our other order flow signals. I'll be doing other volume profile workshops where I'll be teaching you all the different visualizations of zone volumes and all of the different stuff. But today, today's lesson is on doing the most important thing that I think is very, very critical. Who in here thinks that this is the most important thing in your business? How do you remove fear, trust your entries, and use confirmation so that you can bring it all together? Give me a why that you would agree that that sums up the importance of our topics today. Yes? Paul says, good presentation. <laughs> I just, I always try to think, what would I need to hear or what would I want to learn if I was new? What did I need to learn at the beginning that was really, really important? And then what did I really need to learn at the end that was even more important? Okay. So what I want to do first is I want to share with you some resources so that you guys can get in tune with what we do here. Okay, I want to, I want to show you a few things. First and foremost, I'm definitely not John Travolta, <laughs> but I can, I can assure you this, that I try to put out a really active amount of contacts or content, excuse me, uh, for us to grow our social media channels. Okay, and ultimately, I'm going to give you guys a link here I would really encourage it if you guys like this webinar and you guys like the details of the way that I taught you this stuff, that you go to our, our YouTube channel, you subscribe, and then you turn the notification bell on because what that'll do is it'll keep you in the know. I put out recap videos for our trading room. I also put out webinars. My team and I put out content. Every Monday, we have a Money Mondays TV show that we film that is deep dive tips and tricks. And uh, we've been getting a lot of traction because we've really put an effort in this year to put a lot of valuable content out. And uh, I, I do see a lot of traders benefiting from that. So I'm sure that a lot of you guys will benefit from that as well. For those of you that have not yet done this, okay, um, you want to go to our homepage and subscribe uh, for free. It's a free pass to our trading room. Uh, you can come in next week. You can join our community. You can be a part of our trade room. You can do that. And it's, it's free uh, on a pass. If you're interested in some of the stuff that we talked about today, I'm going to put a link in the chat box here that uh, is, is the product page on our website to the print profiler. And that will give you details on, uh, 
on all the stuff that you need to learn that is not just on stuff that I talked about today, but stuff that's really breaking down all the different nuances around the order flow and the volume components of the software. Okay. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that webinar. Um, what we'll do now is we'll break over into some of the pricing details and uh, we'll then spend some time going over some Q&A.